I'm Andrea Sankey, and today's newsmaker is Europe's warmest winter. Temperatures in eight countries across Europe have broken national records this year. At 25 degrees Celsius, New Year's Day temps in Bilbao, Spain, were the equivalent to an average July summer day. But for those thinking a balmy winter sounds pleasant, think again. The world has already warmed by about 1.2 degrees Celsius since the industrial era began and temperatures will likely keep rising. Now, in spite of so many warnings, the global heating outlook keeps getting worse. So can we realistically change that? Well, joining me now, former spokesperson for Extinction Rebellion and co-director of Moderate Flank Incubator, Rupert Reed. Yeah, and you know, Rupert, for those out there who are still skeptical, I'm, I'm gonna ask you, I mean, what kind of extremes or, or other massive weather conditions might actually really convince them that we can't, we can't take any more steps back? Arguably, Germany cannot look at coal development, no matter what the energy crisis might be at this point, that there's nothing more we can afford to do if we're going to avoid mm. the worst of this catastrophe. People say this is an emergency, a climate and ecological emergency. But you know what? That actually understates the problem. An emergency is something where you can send the emergency services and deal with it. An emergency is something you can imagine ending. An emergency is a problem that can be solved. This is much more serious than that. This is a new condition that is going to define all of our lives for a long time to come. And until we get serious, really serious about facing it, we are nowhere. And we will only get serious when we admit fully the brutal reality that James, for example, has been unusual among climate scientists in admitting that 1.5 degrees, we're not going to stay below 1.5 degrees, that these kinds of weather extremes are going to go on getting worse for a very long time to come, that until we actually recognize that our governments have chronically failed us, we are nowhere. We cannot trust our governments to solve this, and nor mm. can our demanding or begging of our governments that they do more be trusted to solve this, because that's been tried, right? right? Our children have been trying that, the Extinction Rebellion have been trying that. The next step but has to be that we start to take leadership into our own hands and recognize the really brutal reality but so far, all this additional renewable energy has been additional to the amount of fossil fuels that's being burned, which has not been going down. And until okay. we start to admit that horrendous fact, we are nowhere. I know, but I mean, what about the people that are still, you know, they still don't really believe it. I mean, what will it take? Will, it, will we have to see, but, for example, Europe's water supply effectively disappear? Will we have to wait for those glaciers to melt before people have to start rationing their own water before they say, oh, OK, now I see how this makes my life worse. There's none so blind as those who will not see. If you can't see it now, mm. I'm just not interested in talking with you. And that's why for some years now I haven't debated climate change deniers. They're increasingly irrelevant almost everywhere in the world, with the exception of some parts of America and regrettably some parts of uh, Australia. Look, this everybody knows, everybody can now see it with their own eyes. Uh, you only have to open your eyes to see it. And we have to start to take leadership on it ourselves from the ground up. What I say to people is start to organize where you are, start to organize mm. to prepare for these climate disasters that are coming and start to organize to reduce okay. your own contributions to them. Organize your family, organize your okay. community, organize your profession, me... because we cannot leave it to our government. But we are now starting to set off feedback loops, tipping points, those are almost certainly, in my view, going to make it impossible for us to come back down again. We have to be very careful not to mislead people here and enable people to be complacent. We are in absolutely desperate trouble. I'm, I'm going to have to interrupt it there. That's going to have to be the final word. Unfortunately, for this edition of the Newsmakers, I'd like to thank all three of my panelists so much for being with us.